Hello everyone, how are you? Nice to see you. Let's sit back for a few minutes because we'll just wait for people to start to filter in. My name's Sharon Hurst. Welcome back to my studio. It's lovely to now, see you all again. Jeremy was talking to you during his demonstration just a little while ago. And he was, he did the most fantastic picture, didn't he, of apple blossoms. And I've been, I was there and I was typing away, answering you and your questions whilst I was working. And I have to tell you that this past hour, twiddling my thumbs, waiting to come here and to see you and to be live with you was worse than anything I've ever done, um, waiting to, in the green room for live TV. And now that's an interesting thing. Did you know why it's called the green room? Did you know? It's an old, old um, tradition that goes right back to Shakespeare's time, to medieval times, because apparently the green room then used to be literally the green sward of grass that was out the back of the theatre. So if you're thinking about the Globe, for instance, in London, out back it was all grass and the actors didn't have very nice, fancy um, fitting rooms and changing rooms like they do nowadays oh no no star dressing rooms they all used to have to stand outside and wait out the back until it was their turn to go on stage so that's where the green room comes from anyway apropos of nothing our jeremy was talking to you about his sketchbook and i do agree sketchbooks are a fabulous idea and i take that one kind of step further because when i go on holiday i like to take my journal with me and i have a sketchbook journal and it's just one of these pink pigs books and i do like them to be spiral bound and i really do appreciate a hard cover because then it's easy to for you and i to work on them and i can Apply it back like that and then when I'm away and I'm out and about I can journal what I'm seeing and this is what I do when I'm on holiday. So I'll take my photographs during the day either on the iPad or on the camera and then sit in the hotel in the evening when I've had supper or if we're having a drink before dinner and I like to sit and I will journal all the things we've done and the places we've been. And I add everything. So this was the vineyard in California. And I will draw little pictures of the road that we travel. Oh, Scotland here. And so I've got, this is the road that took us to it. And along the way, there are songs. So they're the songs that stick in your head. You know, the earworms that you have as you're traveling about and you're, you're going around and about and the drinks that I had, so I'll draw the little cocktails. And this makes real fun of keeping a sketchbook when you're on holiday. And of course, it's a fantastic record for when you come home and you've got all these things just here for you to go back and have a look at. It's a little different to a photograph, isn't it? I like things that are a bit different. Now, the other thing that Jeremy mentioned I'd like to show you is he was talking about um, masking fluid and if you do have an accident with masking fluid what to do with it well look this is marvelous stuff this is masking fluid remover and it's called zest it zest it and it's made of orange zest literally when you open it up the smell let's do a cookery program thing here should we? oh it's lovely look Nigella Lawson look Oh, it's absolutely wonderful. It's orange and you it's an oil and you just literally pop your brush in there and stand it in there for five minutes, take it out, give it a thoroughly, thoroughly good wash, lots of soap, and Bob's your uncle. Clean brush, gets it out of clothing, carpets, the lot. Okay, shall we start painting? Do you want to do some painting? Come then, we're gonna do the forest floor. Now, if you're feeling a little bit squee, I'm going to swivel the camera around and turn turn the actual camera and the, the iPhone around. So close your eyes just for a minute while I set this up. I don't want anybody feeling poorly whilst we start to paint. So here we go. I'm going to turn the camera around. Let me do that first. So I'm going to do this. Oh, look, you're looking out at my front garden. And then I'm going to turn you around so that you're going to be looking at 
my painting. Is that all right? There we go. So you can see a bit of everything there. I'm going to bring you in a little bit so that you can see everything. And I do believe we're ready for the off. These, everybody, are the paints that I'm using today. I've got quinacridone gold and I have, I'm just setting this up, two seconds. There we go, quinacridone gold. This is my poor, the state of this, look at this. This is cadmium orange and it really does get into a mess because it's quite a sort of claggy paint. It's paint with big granules and it, it, it's an issue, but it, the color is fabulous. I've got Prussian blue and I also have with me, this is Payne's Grey. Now I don't know whether I'm going to use that or not. It doesn't matter, but I've got it if I want it. So that's, that's the important thing. If you don't have Prussian blue, you can use indigo. Um, Tharlo would give you some very interesting and exciting um, results. And the other colour that you could use is Windsor Blue because Windsor Blue and Prussian Blue are the same, out of the same stable, so that would work for you. I've also got Schminky bronzing powders. But the first thing I need to do here today is to put some masking fluid on my work. This is what we're going to do. I've drawn it out. And if you want all of the pictures and the drawings, they're there on our page. You can see them and you will be able to print them off for yourself. This is what we're going to do here. Something like this. All right. The, the stripe across here is just the sunlight shining through the window and reflecting. I'm sorry about that. We'll have to try and manage it. Now, I don't want to use all of this paper. And what I've done here then, I've gummed it down very well, good thick gum tape so that it's not going to escape. I do not, absolutely do not want this paper to ridge up and cockle and give me a problem. So I've used good thick gum tape and I've also used masking tape to pop it round here because I know I want my picture to be this size. All right. And the first thing we're going to do is mask these little devils out. I need a little bar of soap and I'm using the blue masking fluid, nice thin, thin masking fluid. Don't want to use anything that's too thick. Give it, I've given it a shake to get rid of the dye in the bottom. And you can see how thin that is. What I need to do with this to make sure that I don't corrupt my brush, this is a fairly old brush, and to make sure that I know it's my masking brush, I just put some red, um, this is nail varnish, around the neck of the brush, around the ferrule. Water, and then come into your soap, and you're going to make sure that you load your soap up to your brush, up to the brim with soap. And I want to roll it to get rid of the bubbles. And that soap will act as a resist for my brush. And I'm going to come in here into my masking fluid and I want to absolutely load up my mushrooms. Now, Jeremy said that he doesn't use mask. His painting is entirely different to mine. It's interesting and it's good for us because it teaches us all the different ways that we can approach a subject. I want to put in a really, really loose, exciting background and I'm not going to do it with the care and the love that Jeremy did. I want to throw in a background because I want to play with the effects that I can achieve with that type of background. Therefore, I need to be able to slap this paint on heartily with gusto and no fear. And this is what you're going to do today. If you look at this and you go away and you have a go, you are going to be brave and fearless. You will be girding your loins and you're going to be going for it. When I clean my brush and I come back and I give it a really good wipe on my cloth, that's lovely and clean. 
no issue at all with the masking fluid. If you're doing a very large picture, make sure that you rinse and you clean and then you re, you re soap and you re dip two and three times so that your brush can't be harmed. But trust me, that's a very, very good way to um, mask out. That needs to be dry before we do anything else. We have our paints and we have our brush. And I want to say to you that the paper I'm using today is a 140 pound Bockingford. So that's 300, and, um, 300 pounds uh, GSM in, old, in new money. Sorry, I'm hopeless with, hopeless with numbers. I'm not kidding you. Just a warning there. If, don't expect me to remember your birthday, I shan't. 300 GSM, 140 pounds in old money, and it's a rough texture. Now they do do an ultra rough, so it's not the extra rough. This is um, what they call not, so it's not hot pressed. That's all that means, it means it's rough. So we actually have the texture of the blanket on the paper, and that we're going to really, really hope today will give us some good effects. I like Bockingford because it's a rough and ready paper, it's easy to use for me and paper and water and paint sits on top of it. I don't have an issue with it soaking in too quickly. Okie dokie. I mean really the difference is between a doormat, two doormats, if you think about a turtle mat doormat which is cotton and beautiful, it costs a lot of money, you tread on it and it soaks, it wicks everything off your shoes doesn't it to keep your shoes um, nice and dry and if you've got a nylon doormat like this you'll find that you tread on it and walk away and onto the floor and the floor is still mucky so this is the issue the nylon doesn't wick up the moisture and this is true of this Bockingford paper let's just make sure that we're dry all you have to do is touch it and if it comes off on your fingers you know that we're not quite there yet. So please forgive me two seconds. I just want to do this with a hairdryer. So hang on to your cat. If your cat's on your lap, it's just about to go flying. Now we know we're dry. Because of course, if I put a brush through that, that's going to make a dickens of a mess. I have a hake brush. This is goat's hair. Goat's hair is lovely because it springs back. And that's the important thing. This is a rosemary's brush. And the first thing we're going to do here is think about the light in the middle of the picture, okay? And my primary idea is to not have it yellow. So this is the quinacridone. I don't quite want it this bright yellow. That's two, two, two. If I take a little bit of my Prussian blue and I give myself this acid green, this lovely green. That will do me. I think I want a little bit more, so I'm just going to come in there like that. And this here. And we'll make ourselves that bright acid green, but it knocks it back. It's not that bright yellow. And that is going to go in the middle of the picture. I'm also going to be using the Prussian blue, but I'd like to to make myself an interesting darker green. Therefore, if I take my Prussian blue, I'm going to use a bit of this, and I add my quinacridone gold again. Oh, look at that, everyone. Isn't that just scrummy? That lovely bottle green. Okay, so we have that. And shall we try and make something in between? So if I take the blue again, And now I come in, I'm going to grab a goodly amount of the yellow. And this time I'd like something bright and that mid green look. It's like a dark sap green. So that'll do me. So I have the three colours there, three tones, and I'm going to use those. That orange. Just watch this space, because I think I might just drop a little bit of that in later. Therefore, grab the cloth, put that on my lap so that I don't come to grief. 
I always manage to get it on my clothes. I don't have an item of clothing without paint on it. What I want to do here is come in and I want to wet it. And the reason for that is because it will give me time. It will give me breathing time. And I want it to start with to be really, really quite shiny. The paper is not stretched effectively for me. This is the stretch. The water's quite dirty already and that's fine too because I can see where I've been. And if you look at it, as Jeremy was saying earlier on, you can see that it shines. It's shiny and that means that I can go in and I, there's no areas there that are dull and matte, so that means that I've covered it all. And it's a strange thing, everybody, your paper will always dry more quickly around the corners, so I'm coming in with an extra glug of water and I'm going to throw that round there like that. I haven't worked that one out yet, I don't know why, but your paper always, always dries more quickly around the edges. So in here, we're going to drop this exciting bright yellow, yellowy green. Just pop it in, let it do its own thing, and then we're going to introduce some colour around the edges. I'd like to go for the lighter green, the mid-tone, and I'm going to throw some of that in. Nudge it up, nudge it, budge it and smudge it. Those well-known solicitors. There we go. So I want that in there. And then I'm going to come into my darker green and I'm going to frame my picture by pooling this colour out around here. So pop that through like this. Shatter it a little bit. I don't want it to be concentric circles. So pull it and shatter it. And then I'm going to mop up any mess. So if I clean my brush, give that a good jush and I want to just use this brush now as a mop I don't want that puddle and I don't want all that water around there that's it so we're just mopping up our mess this is the point if you if you want to do it that you can pick up your picture and you can tip it and tilt it and you can get things to move for you but I'm not going to do that today I just want it all to do its own thing. Can you see the way that that's bleeding in? Prussian blue is the most incredible colour. It, um, it's, it blossoms. We call it blossoming, it rushes. You put it down and it goes whoosh. And that has real benefits. Let's have a little go at that here. If I take the Prussian and I'm going to, now this is where we get into dirty palettes. I'm just putting it in there. I'm going to add a bit more of the yellow, a bit more of the blue. I want it quite dark. And I want to come through here, no more blue, and pull that up through there. And Prussian blue can be quite exciting because it does its own thing. That should bleed up into the area that we've got. I don't know what's going on there. Let's see what we can do with that. Don't despair, just grab a brush. Now, damp brush, do not come into there with lots of water. I want a damp brush, and I'm just going to move it around. And as long as your paper is wet, and it's shiny wet like this, you can move it. Sounds like a song, doesn't it? Move it, move it. But you can move it, as long as you have the wet there, and it's shiny. Just getting rid of a few dribbles. And what I want to do next through here is get hold of my porcupine quill. You may have seen me use this before. These are dirt cheap on eBay. Um, fishermen use them as floats. They float in the water. And the bit for the poor little fish would be down here. But for you and I, they're fantastic because they're ever so strong, really, really strong. You have one end, which is quite blunt, and this end is as sharp as a needle. And it means that I can come in through here and I'm going to pick up this colour and I'm going to hurt the paper. Now at first you might think, what's the stupid woman doing? But actually, if you watch, you'll see 
that this colour runs into the depression and it just, it's dark. Look at that. I just love the way this does this. So we can do that and we can get what we can out of that, that particular technique. So just a few little hairs of grass through here. And then, whilst you're on it, take yourself, this is my number four brush, again, Rosemary's, it's sable. And I can see from my paper now that apart from these two kind of rivers that I have here, maybe three, this paper is starting, it's beginning to dry. So it's not, it's still shiny. And that means that if I come in here with one of my greens and I introduce a toadstool up through here, it will bleed and it will blend and it will just diffuse and they'll make them look as though they're a long way away. They're further away. So very, very wet here, so not a lot's going to happen here. Not a lot will happen here. So that's okay. There you go, look. And then up through here, put it through the wet area. Oh, I've just had a thought about that. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. I've had an idea. A fiendish and cunning idea, my lord. Who said that? Baldrick. It's getting darker. Now, you see that blob? Don't like that. Really, really, really don't like that. I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm going to, this is my dirty brush, and I want to wick it. Get rid of the moisture on the, on the cloth, and then come back in and pull it back. There we go, that'll do it. I've just had a thought about that. Right, everybody. We're going to clean the brush. And we're going to dry the brush. And then we're going to come in here. And we're going to lift the highlight out of our toadstool. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together, even when it's just completely and utterly unexpected. Look at that. So that lifts the highlight out of it. Don't, still don't like that, go away. Put some grasses there afterwards. And I want to, can I do that here? Just, you've got to have a clean brush, a dry brush, what we call a thirsty brush. And it will give us the side of a toadstool. Now, while I'm at that stage, this is quite interesting. If you watch this, water on my brush, water on my brush. And in fact, I'm going to use a thinner brush. This is the rigger brush. This is a zero rigger brush. So developed by Turner for painting the, rig the rigging on ships. That's water on there. And I'm going to pull the water up through this area. Watch it, watch it, watch it. This is the damp stage. This is, it's, it, the shine's going away. And I know that if I were to put my finger on that and lift it up, I would leave a mark. And this stage only lasts for a short while. So we need to catch it while we've got it. But this is the time now. That's very blunt. I don't want that that blunt and I don't want it coming out of the picture. So up, in and round. Let's see if we can do that. There you go. So up through, I'm just going to put some grasses up through here. So this is the stage. If you were to start putting paint in this now, this is now when this wretched painting would all run into cauliflowers. This is the stage, this is it. It's dry here, so not a lot's happening. Perfect, look at that. 
it's very exciting to do this. I like it very much. Okay. And that also means that if I take some water on my brush, if I come in here now and I do that, that should give me some lovely, interesting effects. And the thing with this is less is more, truly, truly, not too much. This will give you the effect of seed heads and of, of um, dandelions, all that loveliness going on. But if you go too mad with that, that will absolutely bleed everywhere and you'll have a mess. You could, if you wanted to, use this stage for salt. So you could be putting salt on there as well. That would work just as well and it would give you some good effects too. But just get to know what you can do with your water because it, it gives you these lovely, lovely effects. If this is the stage when it's cauliflowering, let me take some paint. We're just experimenting now, everybody. And I can, I think I might want to do that maybe with a rigger. Let's try. Let's just see. So this is a mixture of all the different Uggs off the palette. So you see, you get all the technical terms with us here on Artist Demo Days. We've had palette dirt and we've had all sorts of things, but this is the Ugg from the palette. But just to give yourself some idea of some little seeds. I want to have a bit of a zhuzh later on and to spratter and spray later on, but I want to do that when it's dry because that will give me yet again a different idea and a different look. Do not worry about these puddly areas here because we can either turn those into the flowers that are growing up here if we want to later or we can, when it's dry, go in and we can do something with that. This is still wet and as a consequence I want to do two things. I want to drop in some of my lovely, this is the cadmium orange, just want to drop in the ka of cadmium orange and the reason for that everybody is purely and simply because red and green just sing and orange and green same same applies they're opposite each other on the color wheel and I just want to introduce a little bit just to draw your eye in and to make you look at it so you see what I mean about the cauliflower stage, because this will give me cauliflowers here. It's fine. The whole painting is about that kind of thing, so I'm not in the least bit concerned. This is the bronze powder, and it's lovely stuff because it really is metal, and it's, it, oh, yummy. And I just want to scatter a little. It's horrendously expensive. I think one of these pots is about seven pounds, yes, yeah, seven, nine, eight pounds actually, and it's elderly. But look how far it goes. I've used hardly any and it gives you that scrumptious glint on the paper. This is this is what you want isn't it that that exciting shine. Just something so that when you tip it it goes ka -ching. Now some of that's going to go west when I hair dry it. Okay so be it but we can get away with that that doesn't matter. So once again, hang on to your pets, hang on to your tea, because I'm going to just put the hairdryer on for a minute and I don't want anybody to have any nasty shocks. I want to stop this because it will carry on working and I want to stop it. So two minutes, everybody, sorry. Blow me sideways with a chicken's breath. I thought that that would all come off and it hasn't, so that's quite interesting. So again, I've learned something there. Everybody, did you notice though, watercolor, if you dry, when it's dry, 30% lighter. It will dry 30% lighter. That's a lot. So just be aware when you're painting that this colour will really, really fade out. If you want it exciting and dramatic, you really need to go there in the first instance and be brave and fearless. It's a good point. Now, now Matthew always describes that or that as being his masking removal tool. Now, Having said that, I discovered this little devil. It's filthy dirty, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference whatsoever. It's well used and it's well loved. 
This is the Mask Away tool and you will find these on the SAA website. It's like the um, crepe that you find on the soles of shoes. And all we do with it is we use this to rub it on our masking fluid and the whole lot just comes away as easy as pie. Look at that. No sore fingers. I can tell you when I'm painting a really large picture, I have to take all of the mask off. It can be a killer. So this is fantastic. And you can even just dab at it to get it off. Look. And it stays on there so you can just pick it off and throw it away instead of it landing up on the floor. Really, really useful. Now, I'm back to the masking fluid now because what I want to do is just introduce these itty bitty tiddly wiggly highlights on my toadstool. You don't have to go in afterwards with a white gouache. We can do it now. I want to do it now. Therefore, if I, it saves the fingertips, it does indeed so. Now, if I go in there again, I this time I'm going to use my rigger brush. Little, little tiny brush, and I need my soap again. And I want to come in here and soap up this brush, and it right up to that ferrule, because I tell you, if you don't, the neck of your brush will be full of this stuff and you'll be in trouble. You can also use a dipping pen, that works too. And if it's of any interest to you, I've done a whole video and it's on YouTube and you can find it there and it's using masking fluid and all the different things that you can do with it and what you can use with it. I'm going to dip and then I'm going to take a lot of it away. And I'm just going to use the tip of the brush. Really, really use the tip of the brush. I want to come in. Lots of teeny tiny. Imagine you're painting a pet and you're just painting those teeny tiny hairs on a muzzle. Some of these curve round. I'm sorry, you won't see particularly what I'm doing until we remove it. The long, not the very edge of this, but above it, where it curves in, it curves over, round and back in. These little lines, it catches the light through here. And then to differentiate the underside, the gills, from the edge of my toadstool, I want to come along there. You don't have to do a beautiful straight line. Bit of a dotted line along there, dot, dot, dash, like Morse code. And then down the neck of the toadstool, down the stalk, we're going to pop some more. This is where the light's just catching the stalk. And then light, if my light, imagine it's coming through here. I've got the highlights there. And then I want to bring some highlights down this stalk here. And I'm not fussing over much about this little devil sitting behind because he's going to be in the shadow of these two. All I want to do with him is just drop this around this girdle, around the neck here, around the bottom of his skirt, basically. And I think, everybody, that should do us. Should we just have a couple more on there? That'll do. Clean the brush, give it a wipe, and once again, our brush is lovely. It's absolutely fine. There we go. So that's the masking fluid done. Breathe a sigh of relief. And whilst that dries, let me tell you that all of your artists that you've been watching, all of them have got their own YouTube, so you can go and watch all of those other videos in the meantime, and watch those and enjoy them. Let us know what you think. And a lot of your artists also have their own shops. So if you go and find us all on Facebook, you'll find us and you'll see all the other things, the multiple things that we do. We're masters of everything, it would seem. A bit of this and a bit of that. We're all secretaries. Now, how are we doing? Shall we put the hairdryer on it? I'm going to just blast it again. Two seconds, everyone. Masking fluid.
fluid you can use the hair dryer with. All I'd say to you is please be careful because if you use it and it's elderly with a hair dryer, it will stick. Don't leave this in the sunshine because the sunshine will cook it in. So that's also quite a big issue. Be careful with it. But in the meantime, everybody, let's have a little go at our toadstool. What we can do, this first cap here, I'm just going to put some paint on it. I'll tell you what, we'll put glasses on. I'll tell you that much without even. So just put some water on it, not paint on it. Water first. Because then that enables me to go in there with my, this is the gorgeous, gorgeous quinacridone. I don't want a lot. Pop it over. So that's the light side of our toadstool. And then I want to bring in a bit of this gorgeous bright green here, down around here. And because I've put water on there, that means that I can go in and I can manipulate this. So there I'm coming right down to the skirt. I'm not going to clean it and what I'm going to just wick the paint out of it. So it's still a dirty paintbrush. And that means I can pick up some of the green and just nuzzle it into the light. Just gently nuzzle it. That's all you need to do. If I'd have gone into that with a cleaned, watered paintbrush, it would have taken paint out rather than putting and moving it around. So I didn't want to do that. This is the dark green. Let's move that in. And now I'm going to run this around this area here. Dots, splishes, splashes and dots, look. And then what happens if I get hold of the Prussian blue and I'm just going to drop that in hither and yon. Remember I've got that light line of masking fluid. So if I put real dark behind it like that, wow, it will show up when I take it off. I know that much. I'm just going to bring that up round there and move it up through there. Now, Jeremy was telling you earlier on that he doesn't like to outline his things. He likes to do that with negative painting. And this, I'd like to show you exactly the opposite, just so that you can see how you can compare. So with the bright green, the lighter green, I want to come, fine, fine brush, I want to come up. Oh, ever such a light touch. You just want to hint at an out, a bit of a wiggle. There you go. There we are. And if at any stage you find that's too hard, you're going to use, that's wet, I want it damp, and I want to come in and I'm just going to nudge it and nuzzle it and stroke it and love it and make it blend. There you go. And that's how I like to make my things stand out. So it's two completely different techniques there for you this afternoon. This is the bright green and I want to come in and where I've put the little light dobs and bobs and blobs of masking fluid, I'm going to come in and just introduce a few little knobs and blobs and dobs of a darker green. That's not dark enough down here, so I need to go down the next level to the dark green and then I'm going to nuzzle some of that into there Never be afraid to go back in and to introduce more. The point is, if it's wet, leave it alone because it will make a mess. Whereas if you leave it until it's dry like this, when I go back in with the dark blue and I want to reintroduce that down here to really reinforce what I've done, it won't all run and bleed and make a mess. And you'll find that it stays clean. And I want to just come down that edge with that dark. We'll leave that, we'll let that dry, and we'll come back to that in a minute. So let's go on to another part that we can touch that isn't going to corrupt that. Same applies up here. Now that orange that we had, our lovely cadmium orange, I want to pull that 
through there on the tip of this. So we've got to imagine that light's bouncing onto the tip of that from somewhere and then the rest of it's going to be quite shaded. So here's the green. Now this is what happens when you don't put water on first. You've now got to manipulate that. So with a wet brush, wet, get rid of the drips, come in and just nudge it and budge it. And then if I come to the dark colour down here in the corner, ooh look, ah, now hang on everybody, because that colour differential there is not enough, is it? No way is it. No way have I got enough contrast there. Therefore, I have to come in. This is why I wanted the paint grey, but I'm going to see if I can do it first. This is the blue. There you go. So just in that corner, I'm going to introduce, that's the Prussian blue, clean brush onto the cloth so that it's fairly dry. And then that means I can come through and if you want to blend an edge like that, damp brush, come back in and push it back. Don't pull it out. That's a big mistake that we all make. Push it back in, light to dark. Okay, we'll let that dry. I'm going to come into here now. And this, I know this is in shadow, so I want this to be really dark underneath here. Therefore, start with the lighter edge first. So here's our bright green. I need a dark colour against that light, so I know, and I'll tell you what, because it's quite a space, I'm going to come in there with a bit of water first, just to give myself some time and some leeway, because otherwise that might dry quite quickly. The sun's coming round to my room and uh, I don't want it to catch this and give me an issue. I'm just coming in here and I want to make that fairly dark there. And I'm going to bring that along through there. And then I want the top of this toadstool to be quite dark. Now I'll tell you for nothing, right now that will dry out and that will not be dark enough because of course I've got the water on there, don't forget, which, which bleaches the colour some more. Therefore, I'm going to pick up my Prussian blue and I want to come round this edge and introduce the Prussian blue up here. And this is where I might be quite tempted to come in with my Payne's Grey. And this is the artist's watercolour Payne's Grey, so that will bleed into blue anyway, made with the same pigments as um, indigo. So we, we know we've got that blue hue in there. What's hue got to do with it, eh? I'm just going to pull that along there to, to make it look as though you've got this curved edge on that toadstool. And the other thing I want to do, going back to my blue now, is whilst it's all still wet, I'm just going to define that edge so that it will bleed into the green. But I want the darker edge. Okie dokie. We'll leave that. Did we want a highlight in there? We might do. This is a wet brush. Now it's a dry brush. And if I come in there and I just lift out an equal bit of a highlight through there. All right. We can also keep it clean. So rinse, dab, keep it clean pull a bit of a highlight through there and again I think this is the fun of it have an idea in your head about how you want to paint a picture but don't ever ever be afraid to let it morph and for it to develop and to be exciting and to be and just create something else it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter let it be what it wants to be now our pale, pale green, pale, pale green. I'm coming back in there. And realistically, that would probably be quite dark and in deepest shadow, 
Well, I'm sorry, but you're just going to have to imagine that we've got something down here reflecting light back up, and that's giving us that residual glow, because otherwise they'd just be dark holes, and I don't want them to be, because I want to paint them so there. And I'm going to. Watch me. Now, that's through there. Careful with that edge, because we don't want to smudge it, do we? There we go. And again, we've got this problem here with this edge not being dark enough. I need to come in with my darker green and I'm just going to smudge it, nudge it and budge it along round there, up here. And whilst it's still wet, wet brush, come in and give it a blend. So that gives us that edge on the gills that we can work with. I want to come in down here and I can sort out these bits and pieces of the toadstool. So the first thing we're going to do, we need to be quite light realistically. I'd like them to be this bright green. But look, we can have to watch that. So if you think about that, imagine what you might do with that. This is right down here. I want to put this on all my bits and pieces through here. Watch the edges. Don't want it all bleeding all over the place. Pull it up and through. And we've got this bit here. I haven't forgotten that either. I just want to be careful with that. This is where I'd like to pull in a little bit of my orange. So picking up this lovely cadmium orange, I'd like to flick some through there. And I'd like to put some through there against that dark. All right. And the, this toadstool up here is going to be quite dark, so through here. And again, wet brush, get rid of the drips, and then come through and soften. There we go. What do we do with that? It's got to be dark. There are absolutely no two ways about that. That has to, has to, down through to there, get rid of that wobbly bit through to there that has to be dark as does this otherwise you're not going to have any tonal contrast whatsoever bring that across so that you can use that shadow underneath the canopy of the toadstool itself and then we just pull it i don't want to go into that at the moment because it's wet let, let it dry let's let it dry this is still wet enough that i can manipulate it so again i need not from there but from here, I need dark. All right, I'm also going to need serious dark down through there to about there. And I will need it down there. It's the law, everybody. Light against dark, dark against light. No two ways about it. It's the way it has to be. So we rinse, we dab the wet off. And that's such an important brush move, that. I don't ever, ever go back to my painting without rinsing, dabbing and coming back. It's just habit, just get into the habit, it's a really good thing to do. The gills will allow this to dry. The gills, let's go to, uh, no I'm going to stick with this brush because it's got a really nice point on it actually. So I'm going to stick with it. I want to use my dark green. And they all radiate from the stem. It's just the way it works. So we've got to take it up to where we imagine the peak of this stem would be in the toadstool. Like that. Sometimes you get one that will do that. Or that will do that. That's all right, you can do that. Through here, out through here. And we've got to allow that to dry. But what you can do, again, is dab and come in and you can just soften, soften, soften. Soften, soften. Don't scrub it, just gently, gently go through and across it like that. All right. Now, same down here. Same blue. Bluey green, 
No, that wasn't clever, so that's going to have to be a seed head. Let's see if we can, oh, that's all right. So through here again, same, same applies. Oh, I tell you what I've missed. That's the edge of the stalk coming through there. So here we go, up, through, across, and through. Got lovely points on these brushes. And that's fine, but I need to frill that edge. I need to make this darker, don't I? Because look, this is a stalk that's up underneath there. I'm just going to introduce that little bit of green in there. Come in. Now when you're blending, don't come into the colour and pull it out. Take the brush into the colour and say hello. And just do that. Alright, so we'll, we'll work with all our contrasts in a minute. But for now, we're just going to look at what we need to lay on the painting. Down here where this settles into the ground, it's a mess. So let's put some colour in. Put some shading in. And again, as I said, don't come in and pull it out. Come in with the brush and go into it and nudge it. Go in and nudge it. And look at that lovely effect that you can achieve. Where it's into here, take the blue, it's wet. So take the blue and bleed, let the blue bleed up into it. And all you've got to do is come in underneath with a damp brush and just tickle that. And you've grounded your toadstools, all right? You've grounded them, they're there, they're on the floor, they're in the grasses and that's just where you want them to be. Perfect. Next thing we need to do, oh, let's do that little bit of a tinker in there. Look, I can see you, you're hiding and you're not getting away with it. So I'm coming in there and I'm just going to smack that round there gently. And because we don't have enough tonal contrast there, we've got to go to the dark blue. And I just want to snuggle that into there, edge my toadstool like that. Ooh, I don't like all that, so we need to sort that out as well. We're going to use the rigger brush for that. So green again, same as we did with the top one. Load the brush and then get rid of lots of it. And with this, I want to bring it up and round, round, gently, 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 gently. And then with the number four brush, I want to come in and this is the same technique. You're going to snuggle it up to the paint. Snuggle it up to it and just gently, gently give it a stroke. All right. Next thing we need to do here, it's not dark enough because that those, those gills go up into the cut. So we've got to go into that with a darker colour and we need to pop that in and pop that in so put it in and again rinse and dab and you come back into that this way and you nudge it and budge it like that all right same down here pop the color in and a bit there and immediately you can see we've lost some tonal values there so we're going to have to go back and twiddle that but we can do that we're doing all right for time aren't we are you all all right for time Anybody need to worry about a cup of tea yet? Who's cooking a roast dinner? Any issues with that? No? You're learning lots and you're loving it. I'm glad. That's really good. If you struggle with the thickness of paint, that is purely um, experience. Most of the paint that I've got here is single cream. Some of it I'm using, it's double cream, all right? So the, the, the thick stuff is the double cream and the thinner paints, single cream, right down to milk. What I need to do now is really, really address some of my tonal values here. I know that I need to come in here and I've got this, I've got, I've got this ugly, this green on the brush. Now I'm going into the blue and with these both together on the brush, I want to come in and I'm going to come up the gills. Wib now this is when, when you're legitimately allowed to have wibbly wobbly fingers, all right? 
you're allowed at this point because you're going to come into this and we're going to come in and dig and widge and dig and widge and dig all right same down the bottom what can we do there can we so we're coming in and we're wiggling and we're digging and we're wiggling and we're digging and that gives you that lovely frill on the bottom of the toadstool all right and you need to look at that now and that's very dark and this edge isn't and we need that edge dark so I'm coming back to my bluey green and I know that I need to do that and all of a sudden this little toadstool stands out all on its own it stands out it comes towards me and it says hello Sharon I'm here and as I say if you don't like the harshness of that Rinse and dab and then come in and gently, gently soften and this side as well. You've got to come in from the side that you want to soften. I'd like to give myself an edge down there and I would thinner paint. Now I'm going thinner now because it's going further back so I don't want it to be quite as dramatic here, up through there. And then this one, thinner paint again, I want to, look, that's hopeless, hopeless. So I need to come through and up there, dark under that, so harder brush, thicker, 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 and then down here. I need to address the fact that this is a bit of something or nothing, so therefore I'm taking my blue, and I'm going to come around there and define that. And I'm going to wibbly brush again, look. Go for it, enjoy it. And I want to smarten that up because it's too wobbly. Don't like that. And I'm looking at it now and I'm thinking, what do I need to do? Uh, have I got the, the balance right with some of these things? I think it's not too bad. I've got contrast where I want to have it. Just remember everybody, light against dark, dark against light, all of the time, all of the time. The next issue here is to be thinking about making it a little more dramatic. Oh, I can see something I don't like. That. And that. Right, okay. Fussy or what? Now then everybody, if we want to do a bit of spattering on this, sorry, you've got the sun across the page again. If you want to do a bit of spattering, you've got several choices. You can use a nice stiff brush that you can flick with, or we can go for something like our number eight. Rosemary brushes, yes, rosemaries, rosemary.com. Love them, they're all sables and they're very, very good prices. All right. Now, I'm going to take my green. Well, the sun's giving you an issue with the contrast, isn't it? Hold, hold fire, let me see if I can just pull a curtain across for a minute. Bit more, bit more, Sharon, bit more. How's that? a little bit better. I shall post the picture up when we're finished so that you'll be able to see um, see the finished item and then that will give you an idea for um, using it for painting yourself. But what I want to do now just to make it a little more interesting is take my brush and I want to load it with the green and here's the blue and then you stand by your beds because I'm going to make a mess. And this time I want to put some seed heads and bits and pieces in that I want in. Up through here, what happens if just had an idea. I'm going to put some water and a bit 
here. And I'm going to load up with blue and green and I'm going to do that. And then, hold on because the hair dryer is going on again everybody, I'm going to do something quite radical. No, nope, that's not going to work. Right, so what we need to do with that is blow it. So if anybody's got a straw, you'd need to blow it and fuff it and get that to go up the picture, but it's not going to work. Let's just have a play. We can do that with our splashes and get them to fracture a little more. And what I would do now with the get off it, honestly. I'm the star here, not you. And what we're going to do here is get hold of our rigger brush. And that didn't work, but I don't care. I'm not frightened. We're going to do a bit of that and a bit of that. Pull it through that so that some of that's a bit darker. And then we could use a tissue to come down here and just get rid of the dark blob at the bottom. So let's have a little go at some of this as well. There's no end to the fun that you can have with this, to be honest. If I'd have had a straw, you could have taken that there and you could have quite happily have blown through that and that would have pushed all that colour up like twiggy branches and that would have been extremely exciting as well. That would have really looked lovely. Now through here I'm going to get rid of that and then that's the time if you wanted to that you could drop a little bit more of the gold through there if you felt like it. Now let me just blast this again because I want to get to the masking fluid here so that you can see it. should be enough and I'm just coming in here and I want to lift out my white areas so that you can see where the highlights are like that down the stalks of the mushrooms as well there we go and if you feel that you wanted to soften these a little bit more all you've got to do is take a damp paintbrush and just nudge it. Just nudge the darker colours into them like this so that it softens it, it's not quite so harsh. There you go, look. And that works. Now I notice I've smudged it because something was obviously a bit wet there. Don't worry about that. All you need to do is take clean water. Clean water. Don't scrub and just come through and give that a bit of a mop. But I will pop that up on um, our page so that you can see it and you can use that for yourself. So that's the forest floor a la Sharon Hurst. And I hope it's been some use to you and that you've enjoyed it and that it's made sense because we're, it's learning basically to deal with water and paint and quantities and um, thickness and thinness of the paint.